I don't think he's allied as closely as we might think. There doesn't seem to have been any um, substantial or meaningful transference of sort of men, money, or material um, between Cyprus and 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 and, and the Saladin. Um, why he needs this is more for his own self-interest, for his own sense of security. He's a usurper. He's taken over control of Cyprus and, you know, declared himself emperor. Um, and he needs Saladin's assistance for, for security. Um, the Byzantines send a fleet in 1187 to attempt to reconquer the island. Um, and this is defeated with the assistance of, of the Normans, uh, who were about them, uh, there near Cyprus at the time. And it, Guys are cast to you know defeat what men they put ashore and defeat the fleet out, uh, off the island, and he's needs safety. And Saladin is the biggest regional power with you know, got a fleet, uh, Egyptian fleet, that's able to offer ex- extend that sort of sh- uh, shield of protection against the the possibility of further Byzantine or, or Frankish or, or attack from the Normans themselves. Perhaps um, he's going to him because he wants to, he wants to you know keep his crown, his newly usurped crown, and. Uh, it's purely self-interest and self-motivated. Um, there's these sort of fanciful tales in, in, um, that make him, you know, that make Isaac and it's quite this villain of them sharing blood um, and you know drinking <laughs> each other's blood with Saladin, which is all very sort of you know fanciful and and, and, and you know and, and, and inventful and stuff like that. But isn't itself, you know, is, that's just sort of literary style. Um, never met. There's no indication they, they were ever even met in person at any no. time. <laughs> No. He's it's it's purely self interest maintaining his own position and um you know um for Saladin it's a propaganda victory, you know, look at me, I'm protecting, you know, the island of Cyprus, you know. Um this is, you know, something that he can, you know, croon about to to, to people saying, look at what he's achieved. Um so Saladin gets something out of it, he gets an, an ex you know, an excellent propaganda victory from it. And for uh, Isaac he gets the sense of security oh. knowing that then if, you know, Saladin will you know in theory protect him. I would just add to that, I think Saladin also gets the fact, I think he buys off Isaac from supplying Accra. In other words, the siege at Accra mm. would normally mm-hmm. have been able to get supplies, resupplies, food particularly, from Cyprus. And he's off, they're obviously not getting that. They're very dependent on getting things from Tyre. Um, and I don't. And I think that's because, I suspect, I don't have any documentary evidence for this, I suspect that part of that alliance was that Saladin paid off him, uh, Isaac Jimenez to keep his ships in port or not, at least not supplying the besiegers at Accra. So Isaac is at Limassol by May the 2nd, and, um, you know, he's concerned about the situation with uh, Joan and Berengaria's ship uh, off of his shore. I mean, this is something he wants to take advantage of. He invites them to come ashore. Now, of course, the two ladies, they fear a trap, and so they opt to remain on the ship. And so this kind of tense situation develops um, where he's trying to get them to come ashore. Uh, they don't want to. They don't want to put themselves put themselves under his power. Uh, so in the meantime, Isaac musters troops and prepares to, to bring them ashore by force. So, uh, Dr. Schroeder, what sort of men do you think made up Isaac's troops? Mainly Christian Greeks? Were there any Muslims there, possibly? Uh, there is some mention... There's well, there's one story in Air Noel about a Norman knight in Isaac's employ. So, yeah, what do you think? Uh, certainly there would have been no Muslims. The, they had, uh, the Greeks had recaptured the island um, to 100 years before the First Crusades. So they'd been back in position for over 200 years by this point. And the Muslim control of Cyprus had always been a more nominal control. They'd had control. They taxed people, but they didn't try to settle it. So there would not have been a large Muslim population. We just said Saladin barely has enough troops to keep the siege at Accra under control. He doesn't have any extra troops to be sending to Cyprus. So Isaac would have been... Ha- primarily dependent on feudal levies, in other words, local troops that he could call up as, as their feudal lord, and mercenaries. And that's where it's interesting about the Norman, because we just mentioned that he'd actually had an alliance with William of Sicily, which allowed him to defeat the Byzantine fleet. So it's not inconceivable that he had Norman mercenaries in his pay. He almost certainly, based on the chronicles, had Armenian mercenaries. They were mostly crossbowmen. And Dr. Donaghy, did you have anything to add to that? Or? Uh, no, I mean, we've got the, um, obviously, any levies that he's able to bring up from, from the island itself. Um, there are unlikely to have been any substantial uh, numbers of Muslims within his, his forces on the island. It was a, the nature of the population of, of the island um, was largely Greek Cypriot for the most part, with the only other largest um, non sort of Greek community being the Armenians, um, who continue to make up, a, a, you know, a, 
part of his force and uh, continue to do so under the Lusignans. Um, also, you have the this group called the the Arcontes, who are sort of the native Greek landowning uh, military aristocracy, who we might equate to uh, knights. And obviously, well, Isaac's reign was uh, disputed as usurper and um, was not always popular. He would have had his own supporters, his own men from amongst this class uh, who would have assisted him. Um, but yeah, I mean, Armenians and, and the late native levies would have made up the most. And there is the story of this Norman, and it's entirely likely that there were other Normans around. They obviously had the fleet there earlier in 1187. Um, and, you know, the use of Normans and, and indeed um, Frankish knights in general in the use in Byzantine armies um, was, you know, not unheard of quite common in many places. Um, Conrad of Montferrat um, had been active, you know, in the same time in uh, Constantinople with, his, with you know, Frankish and uh, Frankish knights in the same way. So it's sort of, he's got the sort of mixed bag of troops, really. 